He asked if they were ready as Neji and Naruto would stare. Neji would jump back, but Naruto would stay in the same spot as the referee would yell, Go! while blowing his hand. Neji would walk around Naruto, but Naruto closed his eyes. Welcome to the movie of What If Naruto Learned Ultra Instinct. I hope you guys enjoy. Please hit that like and subscribe so I can become king of the anime What If community and anime in general. See ya in the video. So we start this story with Naruto just after the preliminaries of the tuning exams has one month to train and even though he wants to train with Kakashi, Kakashi assigns him Ibisu. Ibisu then suddenly proves to Naruto that he still has much to learn and they go to a bathhouse. Ibisu asks Naruto if he knows how to walk on water, which Naruto does not, so he has to practice with that. Around a day later, Naruto actually gets the hang of it before their training is interrupted by a man with white hair peeping on in the girl's bathroom. Ibisu asks what he's doing as he says he's learning, researching. As Ibisu then tries to throw a punch at the old man, the old man catches it in a very casual way. As the old man asks if he knows who he is, Ibisu says he's never recognized him before. As the old man looks at him, he has gray eyes and, there, and then, after seeing the gray eyes, Ibisu starts getting scared, starts backing up in a very frightful way. Jiraiya, of the secret technique, wait, oh I'm sorry. I'm so, as Jiraiya would then punch Ibisu in the gut. Ever, if you ever interrupt my research again, I'll kill you. As Jiraiya goes back on peeping on the girl's stall, as Ibisu tells Naruto that I think it's time for him to go, as then he sees Naruto trying to get the man's attention. You just beat my sensei, so you have to be my sensei. As Jiraiya would then look at Naruto and automatically recognize who he is. Oh, hey Naruto. As Naruto gets a bit creeped out, how do you know my name? We barely know each other. If anything, I don't even know who you are. Mr. Jiraiya would then reply, I know your dad. Well, do you know your dad? Where is he, by the way? As Naruto states, well, actually, I was raised by myself. I don't even know who my dad and mom was. As Jiraiya would then, but what about the fourth Okage? Where is he? As Ebisu would then pull Jiraiya aside. You can't tell him about that. The third Okage's already ordered that he's not let know about his past. As Jiraiya would then reply, Well, I don't care. Where is the fourth Okage? As Ebisu explains that the fourth Okage died protecting Naruto. As Jiraiya would look back at Naruto, with him still trying to practice his water walking. Jiraiya would then say, you know what, maybe it's time for the eye training. Obviously, if he's not this strong, if he's not strong yet, then you guys are doing a bad job. Does he even know Ultra Instinct? As Ebisu would then reply, Minato was the only one who knew, well, that and another person. But he left the village a while ago, so there was no way we could teach him. As Jiraiya would say, it's very simple. We just gotta put a little scare in the boy. As Jiraiya would then walk up to Naruto. Okay, I'll be your sensei. In fact, I want to teach you a technique already. But we can't do it here. It's not appropriate. I have a special training ground that we can go to. As Naruto and Jiraiya would walk off, Ebisu could only pray for Naruto's safety. On the walk, Naruto would ask, what is the secret technique? As Jiraiya would ask, are you familiar with the term Mikakuta Mokokui? As Naruto who would look confusedly, what's that? Ultra Instinct. It's a special technique of Taijutsu users, but it's enhanced with people who are very well in ninjutsu like me, the fourth Hokage. In fact, almost all Hokage know it, except for the fur, obviously. As Naruto would then ask if all the Hokage except for the third know it, then how come he's never heard of it? As Jiraiya says, it's a secret technique that only the leaf know. Sadly, nobody taught you, even though your father most likely would have taught you if he was still alive. As 
When Naruto would ask how they're gonna how he's gonna teach him about Ultra Instinct, Jiraiya explains how you achieve it. There are multiple ways. Some train their whole lives to achieve it, and some find a shortcut, like the second Hokage. It's very simple. How if someone already had the power, just pump you with it. Then, well, as Jiraiya looks down the giant spiky hole, well, I mean, sorry, cavern, not cavern, but you wouldn't call it, be called a cavern, would it? Shit. <laughs> as Jiraiya would look down a giant hole with spikes, and it seemed endless, as Jiraiya would say, Oh, I should restate the requirements. You need to be pumped with the flow of this ability, but you also need to experience it. Realized what was going on. I won't teach this to you if you're too scared, but I will tell you this is the only Tekka Genkai to be passed down from person to person. Not only that, but if you do succeed, your abilities, chakra, it practically would be the strongest ninja alive. Your goals, what are they, Naruto? As Naruto was saying, it always has. Goals to be the greatest of kind of As Darius minds, well, let's just do everything you want before, that, before we do this. Because not everybody has succeeded. It takes a huge amount of willpower. So, what have you always wanted to do? It's not a total state. There's this girl in my class that I always liked, but she seems to like me back. I always get too nervous when I'm alone. I can't really tell her I don't want to be Mr. Ryan's team. This might be the only time you ever get a chance to kill me. So, I suggest you do that soon. As Naruto, when we walk back to the village, had time to think. As he would suddenly stop to ride. You know what? No. I want to get Ultra Instinct now and impress it. As Jiraiya would say, but not everybody succeeds in this. As Naruto would then say, I'm Naruto Uzumaki, and I'm definitely going to get this power. I'm not going to let some old douchebag tell me if I can and cannot get it. As Jiraiya would sigh in his mind, please forgive me, Minato, but you might see your son soon. As they go back to that giant cliff-like structure, Jiraiya would put his hands on Naruto's seal as he injected Naruto with, a, with the raw chakra of the Ultra Instinct technique. Naruto's body started to surge. His eyes were blue to a gray. His hair went from a light to yellow, a light yellow to a really light yellow, but with a silver aura. His entire body, pretty much anyone from all around could feel the immense chakra. The Shirai would then say, Now, we have to wait until it settles in. We have to overcome it. As Naruto did exactly that, he tamed the power that he just got. Then, as, Jirai, as Naruto is celebrating, Shirai kicks Naruto into the giant hole. Now, you have to activate it by will. As Naruto was falling, he tried desperately, but realized he couldn't. He thought this might be the end. And in that thought, he passed out. He woke up to a grassy field. As Jiraiya would tell Naruto he did it. As Naruto couldn't remember. As Jiraiya would say, that normally happens the first time. Your body would move on its own. That's what Mikak Temogoku means. Self movement. As Naruto would not fully understand, Jiraiya would explain. In order to fully embrace his power, your body, every muscle, has to move like it had its own brain, like it's another person. That's what self movement means. The reason why you need a near death experience? You need to pass out, but your body still needs to know it's in danger while it's happening. That's why some can activate it on accident. But now that, you, that your body is used to it, you could probably activate it on will with enough training. 
how long until this tuning exams of yours? We have a month until the tuning exams begin again. And I have to go into the tournament. It's Jiraiya with Sai. Looks like you have a very busy month ahead of you, Naruto. As we're gonna do a time skip one month later. But you know what? Because I like you guys, I'll tell you exactly what they did. And that's just spar. But Naruto did the spar for the blindfold against Jiraiya. He might get a uh, Ibisu to do it sometimes, which Ibisu actually would love to do it. And or Naruto would get a shadow clone to fight him. But the main training is to for Naruto for his body to move on its own, basically. Now that the whole month was over, Naruto wouldn't run late because Konoha, Konohamaru won't mess with, won't, sorry, sorry, I can't read, I'm sorry. He won't waste Naruto's time. Naruto gets there just in time for everybody to see him. And Naruto notices that Sasuke isn't there. The first matchup, him versus Neji. With this new power, he can finally show Neji that hard work actually beats raw talent. And unlike in the original, this makes sense. Sorry, that was a small rant, sorry. Raw <laughs> beats raw talent, sorry. As both contestants stood in the middle of the field, the referee rose his hand. He asked if they were ready as Neji and Naruto would stare. Neji would jump back, but Naruto would stay in the same spot as the referee would yell, Go! while lowering his hand. Neji would walk around Naruto, but Naruto closed his eyes. Neji would throw taunts at Naruto, asking about how Hinata's been, and wondering if she's been suffering, like she should. Naruto cut his eyes closed, not getting mad. Jiraiya sensei told me to clear my mind in order to activate this power. If I can't do that, then I'll never be Hokage. As Neji would just walk around Naruto before actually trying to strike from behind, and Naruto moved behind Neji. It was in a fast pace, but all Neji struck was Naruto's after image. As Naruto's body would glow silver, and he opened his eyes have a bright silver instead of the blue everybody was accustomed with. Neji would turn around, seeing Naruto. You think you're better than me? As Neji would throw a kick, but only hitting Naruto's after image as he was three meters away from him. Uh, you're running, are we? As Neji wouldn't get into a stance. You're still in range. As she would then yell, eight trigrams, 64 pounds. And every single time when he wanted to land a strike, Naruto would dodge it. All he was hitting was Naruto's after image after after image. After he was done all 64 strikes, Naruto would land a hook onto Neji's torso. As Neji stood gasping for air, Naruto would then kick him. Would do a, sorry, would do a front kick onto Neji on the lower part of Neji's chin. This was send Neji's head flying back as now his torso is exposed as Naruto would walk slightly forward and elbow him into the gut sending him back down to earth. As Naruto stood still. As Neji would ask what Kekagen Kai is this? As the only ones he knew was the Byakugan and Sharingan. As Naruto finally spoke not a kick again guy. It's a secret technique. Something it took a long time to learn. This is my hard work. Something you don't know about. As Neji would get angry. You think I've never done hard work in my life? I'll kill you. As Neji went for another strike, Naruto simply punched him in the face, sending him back. While he's still in midair, Naruto would punch up, punch upward. Oh, sorry, would do an uppercut into Neji's torso and repeat that until Neji was high enough for Naruto to do a jump kick to send up Neji flying. As Neji was trying to get back up, his body wouldn't let him as Naruto would walk slowly. 
Naruto would look at Neji to throw a punch in midair. Everybody stood still. Did Naruto do that on purpose? He does realize Neji's like 20 feet away from him. As Neji would get up. Delusional are we? As then Neji would feel a blow onto his chest. As it was complete air pressure. He was gasping for air. What was that? As Naruto would ask Neji. What happens if you punch the air so hard? What happens if you punch the air hard enough? What did you just feel? It was air, obviously. I just punched it a bit harder than normal. Sorry. As Naruto would repeat the process, punching the air, sending air attack after air attack. Neji would pretty much get knocked out after that. I didn't get to do anything flashy. Hmm, that sucks. As Naruto would close his eyes, they were allowed to turn off. As then, steam would come off of Naruto. After all the sweat, the aura was containing the steam, but now that it's gone, Naruto is basically a furnace. It's how everybody commented how hot it was. Naruto would walk into the stadium in the waiting room. Now all the other fights go as normal, especially at uh, Sasuke vs. Gar. Um, so I'm not really going to cover them because there's nothing really different about them. So I'm just going to cut to when Naruto fights Gara, or at least half Shikaku form Gara. Like I said, I I'm just going to skip over the Sasuke vs. Gara fight and head straight for Kona across because nothing really changes. So basically, Gara, Tamari, and uh, that one guy that I keep forgetting, and I don't really want to pronounce because his name's kind of fucking weird. Um, basically, they run off, and Sasuke chases after them, and the Hokage is trapped in a weird box prison. And Naruto can only think of one thing, make sure Sasuke gets back. So, pretty much, before anyone else, Naruto automatically chases after Sasuke, and, uh, you know, Sakura... Shikamaru and um, well, now uh, Kakashi have to find out where Sasuke is going. So Kakashi tells Sakura and um, Shikamaru to chase after Naruto with this weird dog thingy that can talk. Basically, before anyone, uh, Sasuke gets his round two with Gara, and uh, Gara's putting up a really good fight as Tamari has to fight Shikamaru, and that weird guy with the puppets has to fight Sakura. Naruto blast just passed all of them in the mid air while Sasuke is kind of getting pummeled because he's going to use the Chidori only twice and he used it already. Um, also, Sasuke is pretty much getting pummeled. Naruto mid air would close his eyes and think. His body recognizes that he's in a very stressful situation and he turns to Ultra Instinct again. He, rem he reminds himself that he can only use this three, this three times a day because if he does it a fourth time, his body not be able, might not be able to move for a good week. As we cut to a flashback, within the uh, first week of their training, Naruto learns that the hard way that he can't do it more than four times a day because literally for the entire week he couldn't train. So, um, now Naruto has to fight Gara, but he does way better. His first attack was a kick at Gara's um, cheek of the face, and Gara sent flying. As Sasuke then looks up at Naruto, as Naruto has his silver aura and silver eyes, Naruto looks at Gara and um, attacks with an air punch that he did to Neji. Now, now going towards Gara. Gara tries to deflect with his Shikaku hand, but he pretty much has a power struggle with the single ball of air until it just you know disappears because it can't be there for a while. As Naruto realizes that he might have to put more oomph into this fight, Kara um, doesn't really recognize Naruto as a big threat. After all, his first attack didn't even work. So Gara basically blinks once and Naruto isn't there. He's dead behind him. As Naruto does a kick to Gara's main body to try and weaken the Shikaku. Ooh, Naruto does another air punch, but this time with both of his hands and you know, with more force than before. Gara is sent flying through the trees, and oh, pretty much, uh, he pretty much lands on the ground while Naruto is standing there, pretty much menacingly. 
as now that Garo recognizes Naruto as a bit more of a threat than before, but he's not that worried. As Shikamaru is trying to catch up with the gang, he actually attacks Gara by using a shadow possession and telling Naruto to use a technique already that would actually help. As Naruto lands on the ground and he pretty much walks slowly towards Gara, as Shikamaru tells Naruto that this being cool act is getting old. As Naruto in his mind tells himself Shikamaru doesn't know the half of it. If I move too fast, my body might break down. That dumbass. As Naruto only can jump and walk slowly, as now he actually has a good reason for it. Naruto does a few jumps to try and get there faster, but you know, Gara is not now getting stuck. So Naruto kicks Gara into the air. And Shikamaru pretty much tells Naruto that he's a dumbass because he needs Gara to stay in the ground. It's not got Naruto with the reply. Look, I got this. Go help Sasuke go back to the hospital. And make sure Sakura is okay. I know she came along with you. I can take care of this guy. As mid-air, Gara turns from half Shikaku into a full Shikaku body, landing right in front of Naruto, destroying the surrounding area. The mere vibration could be felt throughout all of Konoha. Naruto looks at Gara as he comments to himself that this is going to be fun. As Naruto pretty much jumps up to the Shikaku's face as he throws a punch onto its nose, sending it back a couple of feet, not too far. As, Shikaku, as the Shikaku, as Shikaku wants to go swing onto Naruto, Naruto would just simply grab the hand and leap over it. As then, for all of a sudden, the hand branched off and created a fist heading straight for Naruto, hitting him. Naruto now is getting sent back and he can't really do anything about it. So all he tries to do to try and like, you know, stop himself midair is trying to kick the air. But he can't do it as, you know, his legs aren't going behind his body. So all he does is scream. And he screams so loud that his body stops in midair, long enough for him to kick the air to try and get closer. While well, Sasuke is running away with Shikamaru as his body's pretty much paralyzed for the moment, he looks at Naruto, amazed by his power. Naruto is so strong that just kicks can send him flying. His roar stops him dead in air and he punches so hard and fast that air would pressurize into a punch. Sasuke is getting a bit jealous, as Naruto has now learned this new ability that he needs to learn now. As Naruto lands on the Shikaku's arm, he pretty much stomps it and the arm breaks off, with well, the forearm at least. Naruto would kick the air again to try and get up to the Shikaku when he realizes Gar is right there. As Shikaku would go for another punch, Naruto would charge up a Rasengan with both of his hands because he can't do it with one. He might have crazy chakra, but chakra control is still not a strong suit. Then use, he then used the Rasengan to kind of grind on to the arm, and uh, for a visual uh, reference, just like how Goku did it to Kafla's beam, um, basically. So while he's grinding on Shikaku's arm, spinning, he gets the balls momentum uh, more of a flow. As he goes for a Rasengan on Shikaku's face, as Naruto would grab Gara and go over Sengon on uh, Shikaku, basically blowing away the giant sand monster as it turned back into sand and went back into Gara's gourd. Naruto is now falling to the ground as he does a light, slight flick to try and like, you know, soften the blow. Um, now Gara is unconscious and we cut back to the hospital. Naruto is on the bed as he used it twice a day he can use it for three times a day, and all of his muscles are kind of like spazzing out a little. But he's just happy he didn't overdo it. But you know, it still kind of hurts as Sasuke comes to visit. Sasuke sits around the bed as he asks Naruto what that power was that he used. Naruto explains it's a secret Kekagenkai technique, but people can actually learn it. My sensei taught it to me, but I can't tell you anything else. As Sasuke would ask what he means, Naruto would have a smile. Why? Are you jealous? As Sasuke would get angry and walk off. 
after a day, Naruto pretty much can walk about again, and he visits Gara, who is still kind of unconscious. Gara eventually wakes up, and Naruto is able to greet him first. As Gara asks what happened, Naruto states, Well, you almost killed a bunch of people. Luckily, I stopped you. As Gara would then say, Why didn't you let me kill people? As Naruto would state, Well, I mean, I had to protect people who I love. As Gara would reply, Then why didn't you kill me? As Naruto would then state, Well, I don't hate you. You are a Jinjuriki after all. As Gara would then um, stutter, But. But I almost killed a bunch of people, didn't I? I see Naruto would smile. Well, I mean, to my knowledge, he didn't kill anyone. As he would walk out with his arms on his head, like he normally does with his arms, like, you know, elbows and all. Basically, Naruto walks out with a smile, he tells Gara to get well soon. As the Leaf Village Ninja are checking the medical ninja or tech checking up on Gara to see if he's okay. Gara starts crying because he now realizes someone actually uh, you know, cares for him. After a week, Naruto Naruto um, attends the funeral of Fidokage's death and uh, pretty much has to train even harder. And uh, Jiraiya end off of Naruto and Jiraiya trying to you know, unlock more of Ultra Instinct. As Jiraiya tells Naruto, there's more than you realize while oh, running down the street. He is extremely excited as he gets to train with Jiraiya again. He bumps into a girl. She tells Naruto to back off and continues her walk. Naruto looks back and realizes that she's kind of drunk and he doesn't put it past her. Naruto continues on his walk, on his run. Jiraiya and Naruto would meditate for the entire day, and Naruto would be off then get right for the next another lesson. Naruto would walk and realize someone was following him. He would look back and tell Sasuke to come out. Sasuke would look at Naruto and try and run away, but Naruto would just even simply catch up. So while we inspired me on this entire day, it was extremely hard to ignore me, you know. As Sasuke would stop, listen here you yeah, loser, I, I wasn't spying on you. I was just doing research. I start to think, Snow uses Jiraiya, I'm like Sasuke, Jiraiya's I'm keeping calm now. Look, if you really, if you want something to say, unless if you keep doing it, I'll do nothing but have to beat you. If Sasuke would just, um, look away. With that power of yours, I need to know how to use it. As an to would look at Sasuke. Well, I can introduce you to Sensei Jiraiya, maybe can do something. As Sasuke would look up, think, he would think to himself that that was way easier than he thought. As Naruto would state, but first, I need a good night's sleep. As Sasuke would ask, but that's what you've been doing all day. As Naruto would correct Sasuke, it's not sleeping, it's meditating. It's way different. As Sasuke would explain, or would ask Naruto to explain, Naruto would state that meditating makes me, sorry, that meditating makes you um, pretty much empty the mind, sleeping with the mind. Naruto would go back go to his house and sleep. Next day, Naruto would grab Sasuke and pretty much try and find Jiraiya. He would bump into Jiraiya and Naruto would ask Jiraiya if he could teach Sasuke. Jiraiya would say, um, ask Sasuke what his goals are and Sasuke would simply answer that he wants to kill his own. For what he's done to the Uchiha clan. Jiraiya would look at Sasuke and state, Sorry, but I can't teach you. Sasuke would ask why. Jiraiya would state, You're too close minded. Ultra instinct doesn't allow it. It isn't really good with close minded people. As Sasuke would take this as an insult, Jiraiya would correct Sasuke for misunderstanding. But I do know someone who could teach you this technique suited for just great for you. Naruto would ask who that would be. Jiraiya would then state, Lady Sue, as Ebisu, would run up to Jiraiya. He would be panting as he would then state, Jiraiya, we need you. Jiraiya would then ask Ebisu, can't you see you're, you're interrupting the conversation? 
Abusu would state, whatever you talk about isn't as important as what I'm about to say. Look, we need you as the fifth Okage. Jirai would just decline and continue on the walk. Naruto and Sasuke would just be on the sideline as Ebisu would state, but we, we need someone. You're the best suited for the job. Since Jirai would then look at Ebisu and put up two fingers. I think it, I can think of two people who are way better suited for the job than me. Ebisu would ask Jirai to list them right now. As Jirai would state, Tsunade Senju and Naruto Uzumaki. Ebisu would think about Tsunade, but when he thought about Naruto, all he could do was laugh. He kept on laughing, and when he saw Naruto's kind of pissed off face, Ebisu would just continue laughing, laughing and laughing. This made Naruto extremely mad. He remember what, uh, but he would remember what uh, Jirai was teaching. The people in this world won't understand when you have when you achieve your dreams, they will. Naruto would calm down his mind and think about a happy place, his friends and family, well, the little of it that he has. Naruto would calm down and just continue on their walk. I wish you wouldn't say, no way. You know what? How about this? If you can find Tsunade and make her Hokage within a week, we won't force you, alright? I wish you started to get cocky, but then I remembered who he was speaking to. Jiraiya of the Ultra Instinct Technique. Jirai would just keep on walking the stage. Uh huh, yeah, I'd like to see you try. As Ebisu would, would say, listen, we need the Hokage. As Jiraiya would say, well, we're starting to go to Lee Sunadis now, so maybe we'll ask her on the way or something. Don't threaten like me again, again like that. And also, don't disrespect Naruto like that again, or we're both gonna kick your ass. As he would order Naruto to start following him and Sasuke. Jiraiya would state that it's going to take around two days to get to Tsunade's normal uh, house and that they should probably find the hotel soon. They walk for the entire day and they do eventually find the hotel. Three rooms. Naruto sleeps by herself, Sasuke sleeps by himself, and Jiraiya sleeps by herself. They get up and continue walking for the entire day when they eventually stumble across a bar where Lady Tsunade is drinking. Jiraiya would state, yeah of course she's drinking at this late of hour. Alright guys, let's go. They would walk into the bar as Jirai would say, Hey Lady Tsunade. I mean, sorry. Hey Tsunade. As he would slide uh, out of front of her. She would look at Jirai, extremely pissed. What do you want, you peeping Tom? As Jirai would say, Listen, I need, to need two favors of you. Well, more of a favor and a question. She would say, Yeah, just ask the question. Because there's no one to do favors for a bastard like you. Jiraiya would then tell Tsunade, not now, especially in front of his, pe in front of his student. Tsunade would look and ask which one's the student, the blonde haired boy or the emo boy. As Jiraiya would state, well, the blonde haired boy is Naruto Uzumaki, the fourth Akagi's son, and I'm training him. He began to laugh. So you kill him and now for his son? You really are a bastard of a sensei. She would then look at Naruto. Hey, you should just cut your losses and leave this guy. He's only gonna get you killed. Just like he did the fourth Okage. I should be gonna drink booze. I should then ask, so what's the question, you bastard? As Jiraiya would then explain. Well, the thing is, the Leaf Village wants you to be Okage. And she then stopped Jiraiya. You know what? I wouldn't be as mad as if, if it came from anyone else but you. I should then grab a bottle and smash it onto Jiraiya's head. Our friend is gone. Because, because, as she began to stammer and stutter, she almost lost her balance, but she got it back again. She would sit back down and try and compose herself, but her body was physically, um, shaking. Because of you, he didn't get to fulfill his dream. Jiraiya would look down. You had to train the next fourth Okage, and you recommended him instead of recommending your best friend. She would grab another beer bottle, drink it, and then smash it across Jiraiya's head. This pissed off Naruto. How dare you disrespect Jiraiya like that? As she would state, listen, let me tell you a secret. Jiraiya killed the fourth Okage. And then he made a monster of Orochimaru. Then he made another monster before he trained the fourth Okage. 
Tsunade would then state how every Hokage died similarly, and if you were a Hokage or planned on being Hokage, you should just stop now. Naruto would then tell Tsunade that Jiraiya isn't like that. Tsunade would then tell Naruto that Jiraiya is a selfish bastard that doesn't deserve anyone. Not even you. Naruto would then clench his fist as he almost be up, as he pretty much had to stop himself from punching her. You gotta stop talking about Jiraiya like that. She would then put uh, uh, she would then flip Naruto in the head and see him fly in the rest of the Who are you talking to? Tony Voice Boy. Sasuke would then activate his second to the Tomoe Shinkan and put hand signs for a fire staff, which is for Tsunade, a primitive ship appeared behind Sasuke. Um, she's pretty much talking about it. And she would then flick Sasuke into Super Saiyan. She would then lift her arm and fling Naruto out through the wall. Yeah, you're right. She would then run at Naruto. As Naruto went to get up, she kneed him in the face, sending him flying back again. Sasuke would then throw a demon wind shuriken and Tsunade would dodge it. But then the shuriken would t turn out to be Sasuke's clone. As then Sasuke would yell, Lion's Barrage! As Sasuke himself would go into the Side ass kicks. So now would block them both and fight. The Sasuke would disappear and Sasuke would just run on the ground. Naruto would get back up as Tsunade went for a deadly blow to the chest. Jiraiya would uh, grab her. Tsunade, these are kids, calm down. As Tsunade would let go of Jiraiya's grip. She tells Jiraiya that she ate some of all of her heart, which kind of broke Jiraiya. He's used to it at this point. Jiraiya will stay working in my favor one day. I need you to train me to be Uchiha kid. Sasuke. Just look at Sasuke. He's too weak to win all to the ego. Just look at Sasuke. He would do what he would do. You. I'll show you. And she would then wield a fire star of Fubo Jutsu. And uh, we're gonna shoot it. But she would just slap it away. And Tsunade would then ask, How are you in a Chiha? That makes no sense. I heard all of them died. And Sasuke states, Yeah, my little brother killed them all. And I plan to kill him. And she would then think, Your little brother is Itachi. She would then laugh and say, well, Now I can't definitely teach you. And Sasuke would ask why. She would then show Sasuke a giant scar would appear, cause this is what he did to me. He used a black flame burn my chest. Now look at me. As Sasuke would then state, what does that have anything to do with my training? She would then look at Sasuke. I'm not gonna send a kid to his death. Unlike a certain someone, she would look at Jiraiya. Jiraiya would state, he survived, dude. As Tsunami would then state, but well, you trained three. And two came back alive. As she would then power up with her purple aura. That's why I hate bastards like you. She would then throw a punch at Jiraiya, but Jiraiya would activate a silver aura. Sonata, it's time to calm down. As she would tell Jiraiya don't tell me what to do, Naruto would pretty much uh, step in front of Jiraiya. I can make you a deal. If I beat you in a fight, you have to train Sasuke and become the fifth Okage. Tsunade would then stay. Alright then. If I beat you in a fight, she wouldn't look around. And then she'll tell Naruto that she'll have to he'll have to buy her booze for an entire week. Very expensive ones. Like a thousand real ones. Which isn't the money Naruto has, but he's willing to go for with it. Naruto would get into his fighting stance and think to a moment of happiness. He would then activate his imperfected ultra instinct. Tsunade would think of which was just dry at the time. She would open her eyes, 
and her eyes went from a grayish blue to a sharp yellow. Her aura would then change to a light purple to a royal purple, and her hair color started to change but then reverted back to blonde as she told herself, no, he isn't ready for that. It's not to its are you underestimating me? As she would then go for a direct attack. You go for a punch to the gut, but Tsunade would just simply flick it away. This dislocated Naruto's shoulder. He thought to himself such power that he remembered that Jiraiya stated that Ultra Instinct is a good with direct attacks. He should think smarter, not harder. He would then relocate his shoulder and it had immense aim. He didn't go for a direct attack, but this time he would shift his position fast enough to leave an after it. Sonata would fall for it and punch the after image. Naruto would then go for the side for another kick, and this time would actually land. Remember, Sonata is hella drunk, even more drunk than the original, so if anyone has a problem, bite me. <laughs> anyway, Sonata would pretty much just eat the attack. She would go with the flow but then resist the kick. She would pretty much just tilt her head, catching the kick with her face. She would then uh, go against the motion, grab it like and throw nearby to a nearby wall. Naruto would simply get back up. So Nadia would then flick Naruto's forehead, knocking him out. She would then clap her hands and just say, Oh, the fight's over. Well, Sasuke, how's that for your vengeance? Aren't you mad? Your friend just ruined it. But Sasuke was just worried about Naruto at the time. Naruto would get then get back up. Sasuke would gasp. So now I would look back and realize that Naruto's body is moving on its own, and she knows for a fact he's unconscious, simply by looking at his eyes. His eyes were held and were really closed. She would go for an attack but it would miss. He would then she would feel multiple hits on her body. It was Naruto's since Naruto isn't consciously thinking, which instinct was more effective. Tsunade would then go for another attack, but Naruto would just simply dodge. She'd go for attack after attack, but Naruto was dodging and weaving. Tsunade would then go for a extreme punch to the ground, but Naruto would just fly up into the air. Not fly, more of a jump. He would then charge an Ultra Rasengan. He would then kick the air to boost him towards Tsunade. His Ultra Rasengan was probably the most powerful Rasengan he's ever made. Sasuke would even feel it. Way powerful than the one he used it against the Chicago guard. Then, she would then go for a direct hit towards the chest, but she not even flip the sun by the way, and then punch Naruto into the end of the game. The fight now is officially over. This Naruto's body then just stopped. He was still breathing, so he wasn't dead. So Nari would sigh. You know what, Sasuke? I'll train you. Not to turn any of your kage. Sasuke would ask why as Naruto lost the fight. So now they would state, Naruto has the will of fire. That's Hokage material. And she would stand back up into an upward position. And she would then stay pervy, sage. <sighs> we had to go back to Konoha, right? Where was the hotel you stayed at? Dryas states, Well, we are gonna have to go back there. She would stay good. Jiraiya would look flabbergasted. Well, I mean, I only rented out three, so I guess that means you can stay with me for tonight. As Jiraiya went in close to her, she just slapped Jiraiya away. No, I'd rather sleep on the floor of one of the boys is, because this is not as pervy as you. They would walk back to the hotel as Naruto was unconscious. Sasuke would put Naruto in his room, and Tsunami would look at the comfortable floor and state that he's just going to sleep in Naruto's room. Jirai would sigh and just go back to his room. Sasuke would tell Tsunade if she tried anything weird, he would kill her. Tsunade would just laugh it off and just go into the floor and sleep like that. The next day, Naruto would wake up to Tsunade on the floor. He would ask what happens she states, Oh, finally awake. So Tsunade would ask what's going on. She would state, Well, he lost the fight, but you impressed me. So Sasuke gets a mentor. Naruto would jump for joy. She would tell Naruto that she still kinda has a headache, so please be quiet. Naruto would respect it and stay mostly quiet and leave. Sasuke would wake up upon this time and wonder if Sunade is awake. Naruto would say she is. Sasuke
Oscar estate. Okay, we'll leave him. Shariah's uh, awake though. Sasuke would enter Naruto's room, and Tsunade was now sleeping in Naruto's bed. Naruto then say, Great, the spin fell sleeping in her bed again. As Sasuke would say again, Naruto would say, Yeah, last night she tried to sleep in her bed by pushing me off, but I woke up and beat her. She probably doesn't remember. Sasuke would state, yeah, yeah, funny. As Naruto would state, uh, I'm just joking. As Naruto and Sasuke would pretty much talk about the current events of going on, Naruto would ask Sasuke why he really wants to kill Itachi. And as Sasuke states it's always been the same reason. As Naruto would ask if Itachi was a good friend or beast, Sasuke would then state, he would always tell her to me that the no that Naruto would just laugh. Sasuke would ask if his pain was funny. It's Naruto would state, No, we're just more like than I thought. You're alone and so am I. Unlike you, I didn't get the pleasure of seeing my parents die. Sasuke would then get angry. So you think my parents' death was a pleasure? It's Naruto would state, No, please don't take it the wrong way. I mean that. I kinda wish I did so I could feel sad about the death. As Naruto and Sasuke continue their conversation until Tsunari woke up again. So would ask what happened last night. As Naruto would state, we found you drinking. Most of the moment would be flooding back. And she would then state, alright, new student, let's go back to Kona already. So you wake up Jiraiya, and Jiraiya's already been awake actually. They would walk back to Konoha, and every student would be surprised they actually got Tsunade back. Tsunade would uh, pretty much try and find a place to sleep, as uh, Naruto would go back to his house, saying that he's extremely tired from their entire journey, and that he wants to sleep in his own bed for once. He would go and do that, actually. Sasuke would state that he's just going to go follow Naruto and head home, then after that. Tsunade would get comfortable in her new Hokage office and would order that Sasuke she has to go to the Hokage office. Sasuke was walking Naruto with Naruto home and Sasuke would notice that Hinata has been following Naruto a lot but he wouldn't tell Naruto yet. Naruto would just go into his house and go into his bed to sleep. Sasuke, after being called to the Hokage office, would go meet up with Tsunade she would simply state, alright, your training now starts, and that they had to go to the waterfalls. We're gonna cut a few hours later, they're at the water, um, they're pretty much at the waterfall training ground. Sasuke was told that he has to wear, uh, shorts, and either a tank top or just straight up in a shirt, as they're gonna get wet, so any clothes he's willing to dampen. Sasuke comes over with a tank top and a uh, short shirt. We noticed Tsunade and kind of blush, as you know, she was big tits. But still, <laughs> still, um, so Sasuke and Tsunade's training starts. Tsunade tells Sasuke that the easiest way to activate, um, Ultra Ego is by thinking of something that makes him angry, controlling it, it and using it to his ability. She would then get into the wet bond, well, waterfall, represent. She would walk on the water and just think of something that would make her mad. She would then activate the base Ultra Ego. This is, she would then explain, this is the imperfected form of it. I don't have a hair color changed or my eye color would change. So don't be sad if this is all you can do at the moment. This is extremely hard for even Jonin. She would then state, Ultra Ego, like Ultra Instinct, also is more of a heat source. So if you use it too much, you will overheat yourself and most likely pass out. For example, she would then activate the full power of Ultra Ego, which pretty much evaporated almost any water around there. Sasuke would be surprised and impressed. She would then state, you notice how that waterfall just disappeared? As water would then come back flooding in. She would then get out of the pond and let the pond fill up a bit. Alright. Until you can do something similar like that, your training will not stop. 
Sasuke would practice water walking and think of a thing that made him mad and try to focus it. At first, Sasuke would focus too hard and would start evaporating, but that's the most. You get the baseline, um, get the baseline ultra ego pretty much started. And his goal was to be able to change his hair and stuff. Now, um, a little change I'm gonna put is that Rochamar doesn't come seeking for Tsunade because Tsunade is not a medical ninja. But he does get his arms healed. So, yeah, pretty much that. I just wanted to say that just in case you all were where Rochamar is. Now, I'm gonna cut to a few months later, which means that all of the events are delayed. Naruto's birthday just actually rolled. His 13th birthday. And the only people that he actually invited to it was Lady Tsunade, Jiraiya, uh, Sasuke, I uh, Iruka, um, Choji, Shikamaru, Hinata, and Sakura. Because pretty much everybody else didn't really see Naruto as a friend. He didn't invite all the Konoha 12, but those were the ones that actually went. And Naruto had a big 13th birthday bash. Shikamaru, uh, Sasuke, and Hinata were the ones that stayed and helped pick up. Jiraiya offering to get Naruto more groceries to put them in the fridge. So yeah, pretty much a week after that, Naruto would try to focus on unlocking the Master Orchard Instinct form. Although it was extremely hard as it caused a lot of heat, which means that Naruto couldn't actually handle it and passed out nearly every single time. Jiraiya states that there must be a trigger in order for it to activate the easy way, or he's just gonna have to continue doing this over and over again. Meanwhile, in Sasuke's training, he got the omen part of Ultra Ego, which basically is just the aura and the eyes, but the hair color change. So think Ultra Instinct, but instead of silver eyes, it's uh sharp yellow eyes. Instead of a uh, silverish blue aura, it's just a uh, purple aura. But something Sasuke noticed about his chakra is that it was more denser than Naruto's. Last soon, Naruto and Sasuke would actually spar together in their, uh, in their respective forms. And Sasuke and Naruto would notice something extremely weird. Naruto had more of a quantity of jutsu, but Sasuke had more of a quality. And Naruto and Sasuke would actually ask Jiraiya this. Jiraiya would sit them down. He explained that Ultra Instinct was way better with quantity than quality, and Ultra Eco had more of a quality than a quantity. In order to fix this imbalance, you have to master the forms. Therefore, Sasuke, you have to have great quality, but equal quantity. In Naruto, you have to have, you have, to have um, great quality, but equal quantity as well. Great quantity, but equal quality. Basically, as Jirai would explain that Naruto technically can summon a billion Jutsu and Shadow Clones, but they would get uh, knocked out with one hit. But Sasuke would make five Shadow Clones, but pretty much uh, he is dirt as a billion Shadow Clones. Basically, that situation. It was more of a chop control, so Naruto and Sasuke would focus on that. And another six months would go by. So Naruto was 13 and a half. Sasuke is around 13. Yes, I'm making Naruto bite me he does great. <laughs> um, so basically, Naruto and Sasuke will continue their training. They'll also continue going on missions. And Sakura would even want to learn the same thing Naruto and Sasuke are learning. But Tsunade basically states that Sakura doesn't have the anger required. But Jirai states that Sakura doesn't have the open mind to be okay. And since she doesn't want to be left behind, she pretty much has to focus on what she, what Naruto and Sasuke don't have, which is Genjutsu. So she focuses more on Genjutsu than anything else, but she does try and, um, you know, enhance her Taijutsu and Ninjutsu, but she mainly wants to be the best Genjutsu user. As she mainly saw Sasuke as a Taijutsu and Naruto as a Ninjutsu, and she wanted to create that balance. So, uh, um, I'm just gonna say, I think it was Anko, her name was? I forget her name, I'm very sorry. And I wrote it down weirdly, and I don't know how to so I think I'm wrong. But basically, Hinata is sensei, as I know she's really good with Genjutsu. So she's gonna be training with her. Which means Sakura and Hinata will go wrong. 
Sakura find out Hinata likes Naruto. Does Sakura try and nudge Naruto in that direction? We're gonna cut to another six months. Naruto is finally 15. Sasuke is around 14 and a half. And uh, this is when Shippuden is gonna start. Yes, Sasuke and Uchiha doesn't actually happen because Sasuke is not have a reason. His training is good enough. Around this time, Sasuke is actually gonna be way better with uh, the uh, Ultra Ego, as Tsunade pretty much tells Sasuke he's borderline almost ready to master. But all he needs is a trigger. One trigger, it'll probably set him off in order to master Ultra Ego. Same thing with Naruto. Only Jiraiya states it's a lot harder for Naruto, as Ultra Instinct has pretty much another stage in between perfection. Semi-perfection of Ultra Ego. Ultra Instinct, sorry. But at that point, Jiraiya states, and Tsunade at the same time, state that they really don't have anything else to teach Naruto and Sasuke. Naruto and Sasuke now don't get training, all they have left to do is try and One day, Team 7 reunites after 6 whole months of being isolated. Sakura reveals how much Naruto and Sasuke have grown, and Naruto reveals how much Sasuke has grown, and Sakura has grown, but Sasuke really doesn't want to be the mind. Also, Sasuke's personality would shift a little more. Instead of being a disrespectful evil boy, he is way more respectful than Naruto and Sasuke would actually think about what he says before he says it. Maybe because Tsunade would pretty much get that checked. He's also more vocal in his toys than the next one is. Now Hinata is going to be a lot more confident since Sakura will have a great impact. So Hinata is going to be a lot more blunt with Naruto. Which this would lead to Hinata confessing to Naruto a lot sooner than she really does. And Naruto isn't going to be deaf to love as, like I said, he spends a lot more time with Jiraiya. So yeah, Naruto actually accepts this and they do want to date. Which means yes, Naruto and Naruto start dating a lot sooner than originally came. Sakura would try to move in Sasuke, but Sasuke pretty much puts the date and tells her that she'll only date her after he's finished with his goal, as he doesn't want that to get in the way of their relationship. So it was more of a I do like you, but until I finish what I need to finish, I can't have it right now. It was more of that. So she's not really mad or sad about it. In fact, she's happy that Sasuke's thinking about it. Alright, now that all the OBW OB stuff is over, time to get into the plot. Basically, the Kazukage disappeared. And I'm not and uh, I really have a reveal I want to show, so I'm not gonna tell you who did it. But basically, Tamari contacts uh, the Konoha village that Gara mysteriously disappeared one day, and there was no sign of who did it, other than a strain of blonde hair, which made them lead to think that it was Naruto. So they pretty much go in there and state that they're gonna have to talk with Naruto to see if he did it. What she do? The second Tamari sees Naruto, she instantly tries to attack him. But because of Naruto's immense training, he dodges it almost without a mind. Naruto would ask what Tamari thinks he's doing, she states that Naruto must have kidnapped her. As Naruto asks what she thinks of why she thinks that, she would state that she, she saw a, a bright yellow strand of hair. As Naruto would tell Tamari it's impossible, she was training with Sensei Jiraiya for almost the last two and a half years. She would just state that she would sense it, she saw her, and she's really mad because her because of her older brother she would swear to protect is gone now. As Naruto would state, you said the Kazakage is missing, but how is Gara the Kazakage? He should be only 15 now. She then state, well, you see, in our family, there's always a family, there's only one family that's the Kazakage. That's Gara's true last name, Gara Kazakage. And the the one child that has powers most related to the previous Kazakage is next elected as soon as possible. Naruto didn't be amazed. Gara was able to become a ho uh, become a Kage before him, and he's now a bit mad. Also, Naruto isn't a uh, 
Kenya. He's actually, he actually went for the Chino exams and became a Chino. So, uh, I don't really know why he wasn't a Chino. I mean, I understand he didn't take the video, but he's definitely more than Chino. So, I don't know if he's that. Anyway, Naruto's a Chino now. Naruto pretty much states that Team 7 got this and they can probably figure out who did it. As Sakura then state that she was trying to learn some new tracking ninjutsu, so maybe she can find she can use this as practice. She then take a strand of hair and use a special genjutsu that pretty much allows her to track where the original chakra of the person is. She then state that she now has a, a pinpoint but it's very like dotted and it's a lot hard to see. Sakura then elects that Team 7 shall go on this mission. Kakashi would then state, uh, as they go up to Kakashi and said they have a new mission to rescue the Kazekage. Kakashi would accept this and they all leave. Now, because of Sakura um, being able to track down the ch chakra, it was a lot easier than the original canon. And it actually takes a lot faster, too. It takes around a day and a half, actually. Now, because of this, actually, Naruto, the people who actually go after it isn't just Team 7. It was actually Naruto, Sakura, Sasuke, Tamari, and Shikamaru. Yes, Shikamaru. So this is going to affect the uh, plot a lot harder. I mean, a lot better, I guess. So around this day and a half, Tamari actually got to know Team 7 and the add-ons a lot better. Specifically, Shikamaru. The reason why is because Shikamaru is a Jonin and he hasn't really have a lot of missions to test it out. Tamari would actually come to like Shikamaru. As she did like smart guys. Shikamaru wouldn't be blind at love like Naruto does, but she never really asked out Shikamaru at all, so. They eventually tracked down Deidara. Deidara would state that um, he would ask Sasori to ha handle these guys, as he needs to extract the tailed beast. It's not to remember what happened, what does that to Jinjuki. Naruto would yell to Deidara, I wouldn't yell his name, but pretty much just yell, You, blonde haired boy, bring back my friend before you kill him. As Deidara would smile, You fools, you know nothing of art. In fact, my art is an explosion. As he touched Sasori to move, an explosion of a landmine field would, you know, explode all at once. Naruto and Sasuke would be the basic shields, as they would protect everybody else. Naruto would activate Ultra Instinct as Sasuke would activate Ultra Ego. As Data would state, you guys have it too? That's fun. As Data would activate his perfected Ultra Ego. His blonde hair would then shift to a light purple. His eyebrows would disappear and his eyes would turn into a light um, yellow. Sasori would then state, he has this from here and he just simply uses puppets. You have to extract the nine tails, remember? Deidara would then turn off Ultra Ego and state that he has a point and run off of Gara. Sasori would basically hold off everybody. And unlike this one, he's not playing around and he instantly uses 100 puppets. The reason is because Sasori also has Ultra Ego, but he hasn't perfected it yet. Oh yeah, and that old lady girl doesn't isn't there to have Sasori um to use Sasori's parents, so this is a lot harder than the original. But basically, Naruto and Sasuke would fight the puppets. But because of the puppets were enhanced by Sasori's ultra ego, and some of these puppets are hella strong, it does take Naruto a quick second, because Naruto's more focused on dodging and Sasuke's more focused on attacking. While Sasori is um pretty much uh um pretty much distracted. Uh, Shikamaru would catch Sasori in a shadow position due to. But Sasori would tell Shikamaru it's practically useless as he doesn't even need the move to control his puppets. But Shikamaru would then state, yeah, but as long as we kill you, the puppets are gone. As Sasori would then state, haha, <laughs> trying to kill a puppet master without knowing that I'm a puppet as well. As Shikamaru would ask what he means, Sasori would basically state that he turned himself into a puppet and controls himself as well. And that it's not going to be as easy as killing him normally. Tamari would then use her fans to fend off a lot of the puppets, but Naruto and Sasuke were the main attackers and Kakashi. K 
Kakashi would leave an opening for Naruto and Sasuke to get through, in which they do, to track down Deidara. Sakura would pretty much tell Naruto and Sasuke to keep heading straight, and would throw a secret scroll that would instantly track Deidara's chakra, so it would be a lot easier to, for Deidara not to hide. I mean, yeah, sorry, I said that wrong now. Anyway, so, so Sasori is having pretty much fun with this. And Sakura actually traps Sasori into a Genjutsu, but she had to get real close, which means she had to use Taijutsu for close. She would then state Genjutsu style memory. Sakura, sorry. Sakura Lily Palm memory. Basically, a, so a bunch of Sakura leaves will cover Sasori. And what this does is make Sasori go back to a memory that he doesn't want to remember, that he blocked out. Does it work on everybody? But Sakura just wanted to try it out, and it's this was one of her newest genjutsus. So Sasori would look at his parents, and look at their dead and mutilated corpses. But unknown to Sakura, this made the situation worse. So Sasori would activate his 100% Ultra Ego. His hair would go purple, and his eyebrows would pretty much just disappear, and would look like the original Ultra Ego. All of his puppets were enhanced too. Sakura would be blown away by the immense heat. Sakura states that she didn't know this would actually encourage him, and she thought this would make him break down. As, um, because of this, his uh, top robe is pretty much torn off, and they see a giant red circle. Sakura states, oh, wait a minute, as Shikamaru states, red button, that's the spot, guys. Tamari would try and get in close, but pretty much Shikamaru's main plan was to try and keep Sasori there, which he is stuck there. But most of the puppets try and kill Shikamaru, but Tamari would protect Shikamaru, and the main goal was to get, um, to kill Sasori, which was actually a lot easier than most people would think, as Sakura still had MS Taijutsu, just not as much as the original, so it would be a lot harder. But Kakashi does eventually get close enough to Sasori before an age of uh, Chidori to Sasori's heart and would kill him. Sasori would remember, but would ask Sakura to kill him again so he could see his family again but alive. She would then grant his wish as he is dying after all and would die with a smile as he would whisper mom and dad. We are now going to cut to Sasuke and Naruto. They're running after Deidara as Deidara is throwing a bunch of clay bombs. Sasuke would state that he knows this guy's type, as he would then, then pick up speed with his ultra ego. Naruto would be easily dodging and would actually try and get up close. Deidara would then yell, art is an explosion, as Naruto would yell, shadow clone jutsu, one billion barrage. As Naruto would summon one billion shadow clones, pretty much covering the land. As Naruto states, there's literally nowhere to run. Deidara would state that if he can't have Gara, no one can, we'll try and activate C4. But he would be too late, as Sasuke would jump up into the air and punch Deidara. He would then grab Gara and throw it at Naruto. Naruto would throw it to clone the clone, pretty much when they can get back to Kakashi. When Kono got her, uh, put Gara back on the wagon, and basically Naruto states that all of his clones are about to disappear now, so you better take Gara. And they all do. As Naruto's breathing heavily, he states that he hates his Nijutsu if he doesn't really need to. As, uh, pretty much, um, sorry. Dogori? Fuck, how did I forget? Deidara would try and activate C4, but, Sas but Sasuke would shut that shit down and knock him out. Naruto would ask why he didn't just strip up kill him, and Sasuke would state, I thought I was supposed to be the heartless one. We need the information. Let's just take him back. As Naruto would mock Sasuke, yeah, let's just take back the new for um, I know what that type of chance. We can let destroy all of them. As Sasuke would state, yeah, we think we're gonna take away Sasuke. As Naruto would just Sasuke and Naruto would sneak. They would eventually get back as the hope of the steel. The Kazuka finish was complete. And this time, Gara doesn't die because his tail beast isn't, isn't extracted. 
and uh, basically this is where I'm going to end off the part. This was extremely long, 40 minutes in fact, and uh, to be honest, <laughs> um, I'm sorry, this was all over the place, I had to do multiple rewrites, and now I just, eh. and also, if people don't like that I didn't do the Sasuke Retrieval mission, I mean, I literally saw no reason why it would, and I know it kind of just blew past a couple of years, uh, if you guys specifically request to know what happens in greater detail, maybe I'll make a part special, or uh, a filler special, where I basically explain all of everything that does happen in better detail than I did. Because I did have a lot more. <laughs>